The next two poems are poems that came out of the time that Gloria and I spent in the south of France with the woman from South Africa. And the first one is called Party Time. <coughs> I need to explain a little bit to you about one reference in here. I speak of broken pot shards, and in West Africa, broken pot shards are left on a woman's hearthstone as a sign that one of her sons did not survive an initiation ritual, and therefore that he will not return. And Eleanor Bumpers is the name of a woman who was um, killed in her house, a 67-year-old black grandmother, who was shot down in the Bronx a few years ago because she refused to let people come into her house by police. So the title of this is Party Time. Newspapers printed in secret report the bent needles under the child's fingernail. Bored stitches through the bleeding scalp. The grandchildren playing hide and seek riddled with bullets behind a silk cotton tree. Two more funerals in Soweto. Behind the small coffins, Lillian's son-in-law drags his feet, Achilles' tendons shredded by police dogs, festering. In their eyes, each memory of home poised over pot shards in the dawn. <clears throat> but who sings the songs of my mother's muscled beauty? These large, Saw-footed women with nimble tongues, gnarled ankles stepping to an elegant rhythm, arms akimbo in quick march time, rocking with laughter, and the young ones strut without illusion, their weathered extreme bodies blossoming in the singing night. Lillian's hooded eyes invite me into the circle, a strum of voices weaving an intricate drum. Over grape juice in South Provence, the women from South Africa lower their voices, discussing rent and who has not yet paid, a protest punishable by death burning through the Morfrio night. Eleanor Bumper's grandmother, shotgunned against her kitchen wall by the rent marshals in the Bronx, moves back and forth among us, humming. Her breath is sweet acacia in this stone yard at sunset. Rhythms quicken, and I come next behind her. 